All right, so uh, welcome to our second tutorial for the Q2 Hackathon, and uh, it's a pleasure to have Jason Lenny, one of our uh, team members from, uh, from the product management team. So I guess, Jason, without any further delay, I'll let you introduce yourself and, uh, uh, and, and uh, let you introduce your topic. So. Sure, thanks, Ray. Um, so very excited to be here, uh, very excited to be part of the, um, the hackathon and see what everybody comes up with. Um, and yeah, I'm a product manager here at GitLab and um, my whole career has been in continuous integration, continuous delivery, release management, that sort of operational planning and execution side of things. And so here I'm the product manager for CICD uh, and today I want to talk a little bit about our release stage. Um, overall within CICD we have um, three stages. We have Verify, package, and release. Verify is the CI, automation, pipeline, and um, testing side of things. Package is things like deploying your um, uh, MV, Maven packages or um, any kind of like binary dependencies and management of that sort of thing. And then the release stage, which is all about the actual delivery of your code to your customers. Um, and there's a number of different categories that I'll talk about in here. Um, but overall, yeah. It's uh, you've built your code, you've tested it, and now you're ready to start rolling it out to your customers. Um, we have a page here, uh, about.gitlab.com slash direction slash release. Uh, and actually, if you go up one, you'll see that there is um, all of those different stages I was talking about here. They all have their uh, individual pages that are going to look a lot like the one that I show you here, uh, where it talks about uh, what the kind of category content is from a very high level, or the stage content. Uh, what our North Stars are. So these are the strategic things that we're thinking about and working on delivering this year. Um, in this case, uh, using auto DevOps to do zero touch delivery, make uh, to do things like once your build and, and pipelines are, co are complete and successful, that uh, we can just take that package that you built and automatically figure out how to deploy it to your Kubernetes environment or whatever cloud environment you're using. Um, so some of the epics that are associated with this are making CD more reliable uh, and simpler, a lot of what I was just talking about. Um, managing stability and master easier. Um, so this is things like making sure that uh, pipelines aren't failing, that we can um, help before you do that commit and uh, to master to make sure that things stay green. Uh, analytics and reporting and CICD, super important, obviously. AB testing using feature flags. Uh, one of the big things that we're doing at a high level here um, is something called progressive delivery. Um, it's an interesting concept that's sort of evolving from the continuous delivery ideas that came from the little continuous delivery book that I have back on my shelf back there. Uh, it's using feature flags, it's using GitLab review apps, it's using tracing for monitoring, um, and tying all these together in a way that isn't really groundbreaking on its own, uh, per se. Um, but when you tie all of these together, you get an incredible amount of performance that uh, you wouldn't have achieved in any other way. So feature flags is a big part of that. Feature flags is a big part of the North Stars for release and A-B testing, incremental rollouts using feature flags is tied to that as well. Uh, environments is also part of the release stage. So making environments easier to use and manage. Um, certificate handling is sort of just making it easier as well. Uh, but making environments easy to provision, making review apps easier to use is a, is a big part of that. Uh, and then just in general, this is all about the steps that people you might think of like release managers who are doing all of the tracking and administration of making sure that different things are passing and different dates are happening are all implemented within GitLab uh, and that they're all actually done in an automated way rather than by having somebody go around with a clipboard and make sure that different things are done. Um, so we come now to the categories that are part of the stage. Each of these also has its own uh, vision with details about what we're implementing there, how we're thinking about the category, um, what the maturity level of the category is, so where, we, um, uh, where, where it is now in terms of how usable it is, and then where, what we need to do to take it to the next level. All of that's documented inside each of these categories. I'll give you a brief overview of what each of the categories are, and then we'll take a look at a couple of the ones that might be most interesting to contribute to. Continuous delivery is all about that automation that takes the, um, the built code, the tested code, and deploys it to production. So 
Uh, it's not worried about environments. It's not worried about anything like that. It's just actually doing the important delivery step. So incremental rollouts is part of this. Things like canary deployments, um, you know, AV deployments, all of that stuff is part of our continuous delivery category. Release orchestration is all about what the release managers I was talking about were doing and making those um, things that they were doing manually in the past or with Excel files or, or clipboards, um, building that into GitLab and making it all work, um, you know, in an in a automated way um, that's effective for developers and, and is also auditable and manageable by the company. Um, GitLab Pages is a tool that lets you create um, uh, websites from within GitLab. Um, that if you create a project and it's pages enabled, then it will publish the content that's checked into your repo automatically, uh, and you can build little websites with this. Um, for our release context, it's used for publishing things like uh, results of the uh, testing or other web type artifacts that are part of a, produced as a byproduct as part of a pipeline. Review apps is a really cool feature and something that's really unique to GitLab. Um, review apps are where GitLab, <clears throat> based on just the way your product is configured, your project is configured and the content in it, we will automatically create an environment, deploy your code into it, spin it up, tie it to the merge request that you're working on, and let you uh, interact with it and um, basically have an on-demand environment that's automatically created for every merge request that you're working on. Um, it's super, super valuable. Um, it's uh, it's really a game changer. And we're working on some features there to do like automated acceptance testing as part of the review apps. So um, you can imagine if the merge request spins up uh, a, a review app, and then you go over to the review app, uh, what we're going to add is a panel where you can add feedback right, right in there, and that will automatically end up in, back in the merge request. Um, so that's a, that's a really cool feature uh, and could be pretty fun to work on. Incremental rollout, again, is tied to the continuous delivery one. We, so we sort of touched on that. Uh, feature flags, also tied to progressive delivery and how we uh, are going to enable teams to do um, incremental rollout uh, in, a, in a controlled fashion. Um, if you're really interested in this topic, I would recommend checking out the um, progressive delivery content that we've written on the uh, CICD direction page. Um, but overall, you can think about it how the um, uh, you know, as a developer, there's a number of different stages that you go through as you're releasing. Uh, you've got um, the initial stage where maybe you just have your own personal test environment. Then you invite a couple of other developers or maybe a product manager or somebody else who's a stakeholder on the issue and just they can privately look at it, at it with you. Then you might start rolling this out to production. You might start doing it with a uh, feature flag where only people who have a company email address uh, can can interact with the feature and everybody else just sees whatever else is out there. Then you might start rolling it out 10, 20, 30%. All of that's going to be enabled by feature flags. Release governance is about collecting evidence about what's happening during the release. So if you think about, um, you know, from the time a issue is created and then somebody does some analysis on it, it's tied to a milestone that's going to be delivered. That milestone is then tied to a release. There's this whole chain of events that happen that ended up being a large release that went out to production. Um, audit teams and uh, compliance teams and large organizations are really interested in all of that data so that they can do auditing effectively. Um, because GitLab has the single application that bridges um, you know, everything from A to Z, uh, we can collect all of that uh, very, very effectively. And so our vision for release governance is about that. Uh, secrets management is our newest category for release. Uh, and it's a really, really exciting one. Um, it's what we're planning on doing here is integrating with Vault and you know KMS and uh, AWS Secrets Management and making it uh, easy to store CI/CD variables inside of uh, one of those more secure repositories. But even going beyond that, um, storing GitLab's own secrets like GitLab's uh, key that it uses to access its own internal database within uh, one of these key stores. Um, and then also providing uh, or just exposing that through GitLab for uh, any developer who wants to develop uh, to store any secret that's related to development. So you'd be able to interact with the GitLab workflow and have secrets management built in uh, using uh, and backed by you know, one of these very, very solid tools that's out there in the market today. Um, so yeah, uh, those are the categories. We'll come back to that. 
I do want to touch on this contributing section, which is in, I think, all of the uh, direction pages, three to the pages. Um, there's quick links here, which I'll open up, um, for where you can go to start finding things that might be interesting to work on. Um, there's this contribute for prize one, where we offer a prize. Uh, and you can find more details on that uh, on this link for the code contributor programs to see if there's something here that you want to contribute to. These have been selected as being really, really valuable for our customers, for us, um, and deliverable. So this is a great place to start. We also have accepting merge requests. As you can see, there's a lot more of these. So this this tends to get applied more broadly. And it's there could be things that are easy to develop in here. There could be things that are quite complicated. Um, if you see that something is already scheduled for an upcoming release, that doesn't mean we don't accept uh, merge requests on it. So uh, feel free to contribute something even that's coming up. Uh, a good place to start with that is to reach out into uh, that issue. If you see something that's already kind of scheduled or being discussed, you could ping in there and talk about uh, and ask about um, you know what what our plans are, what and how you might be able to contribute. UI polish items, if you're a front-end developer, are a great place to start. Most of these are all going to be accepting merge requests as well. Um, but UI polish typically means that there's just something a little bit weird in the UI, uh, and it can be corrected hopefully pretty easy. Sometimes there's a little bit of a back-end work to change the data that we're sending to the front-end in order to make these work. But usually these are pretty self-contained and don't really change a ton of the um, you know, core functionality of the application. Uh, and then community contribution are ones that um, these have been flagged as already in progress. So there's already community contributors working on these um, and uh, actively working on delivering them at some point. So these are good if you want to collaborate with somebody. If you're not feeling confident about delivering something on your own for the first time, you can jump in here and potentially offer to help and learn a little bit from the folks who are working on this. Um, the other sections here are just what's up, what's coming next in our uh, next few releases as well as um, other interesting items that we've tagged as being potentially cool things that we plan on doing, um, but don't have committed to a specific milestone yet. So hopefully all of that's pretty clear. Um, I think that there's a couple of different categories um, that are good to potentially start working on and, and, um, and do cool things. Um, feature flags uh, is a good one. Uh, review apps is a good one. Pages is a good one. Uh, and um, I would say uh, I would say that probably those are the the first three good ones that you could really look at and work on something that's independent um, and deliverable and and can add value without touching a lot of the core functionality of the application. Um, that isn't to say that there aren't really cool things to contribute in each of these other categories. So if you find something there, please don't be um, you know dismayed that uh, or, or discouraged that you shouldn't uh, contribute something in those categories. You should, um, but these are going to be good ones that. Um, are more, you know, evolving and um, and uh, are, you're going to be. Able, it's going to be easier to find things to contribute. Um, so each of these categories and all of the categories and all of the different stages also have a web page that talks about what we're doing for that specific category. Um, there isn't a contributing section here um, to supplement the one in the other section, um, but you can find issues here by looking, for example, at the issue list. Um, so what I did was clicked on the issue list here, and it brought me to all of the issues that are open with the feature flag label. Uh, and you can see in here, there's some with accepting merge requests, there's some with UI polish. Um, so you can sort of use that, those same filters, and you can even add them here. So if you want to see only the UI polish items, you can select that here uh, and find everything that's related to feature flags. That's just the UI polish item that, again, if you're a front-end developer, might be a great place to start. Um, but overall, there's all kinds of interesting things in here. Um, feature flags is really great because it's a very new feature. Um, so we're adding a lot of basic functionality to a very simple bit of code, or relatively simple bit of code. It's based on the Unleashed client library, so we're building a backend that's compatible with the uh, Unleashed, compa uh, with the Unleashed um, client library. Uh, and so um, if you're already familiar with that, that could be a great place to, uh, to contribute. Um, there's a lot of things here about logging. There's about adding new kinds of um, access controls and different kinds of, um, by, and by access controls, I mean different kinds of filters about who's gonna be able to see the feature. So right now you can turn it on or off per environment. We're adding that you can turn it on or off per user ID. You can, you know, there's percent rollout. There's all these different kinds of things that we're gonna be adding. You could contribute those. 
Um, so that's the uh, that's a good summary of the feature flags, I think. Um, these maturity plan items are specific ones that we've identified as being important to bring the category to the next level. So if you really want to contribute on something important uh, to, the, to the category, then this is a great, great set to look at. Some of these may be more complicated. But that's OK. Again, um, if you want to work on something complicated, that's awesome. We, we welcome that. Um, but I would encourage you to reach out in the issue and just say, hey, I'm a, I'm a contributor. I want to add something to this. Um, do you have any feedback? And then our technical folks, or, or me as a product person, will jump in and, and help you out. We've also got review apps, which I described a bit. Um, there's a lot of improvements here. There's a lot of quality of life improvements here as well, um, where, again, UI polish items can be found all over the place. Um, and if you have something like you're interested in iOS Android development, if you're interested in other ways of using review apps, um, there's a lot of cool, interesting things here to work on. Um, I will say GitLab Pages is another one that's very, very similar. GitLab Pages is pretty mature and, uh, and out there. So um, it can be a little bit more daunting to learn how it all works. Um, but if you're passionate, a passionate GitLab Pages user and you want to improve the user experience, there's definitely stuff in here. And I will touch on one more area that I think is interesting. Within the release orchestration category, uh, we've recently introduced the concept of releases in GitLab. Um, so you can, pop, you can create a release, associate it with a tag inside of a Git repo, and then publish release notes to it. And it has other elements where you can uh, attach a binary to it. Uh, it's like the tar.gz of whatever you built. Um, and it has other metadata that you would typically associate with a release. That feature within the release orchestration category has a ton of interesting things to work on. Um, and uh, again, it's a very, very new feature, so it's not compli too complicated to get started. Uh, and there's a lot of UI polish items in here, like you know, simple things like allowing to delete an environment from the UI. Uh, but we've also got interesting things that we're doing very, very soon. Like uh, right now, you can create a release, um, but it just exists and it takes the date of the um, date that you created it, and it's, it's all very simple. What we want to allow people to do is set a date uh, for that release, and that date can be in the future. And if that date is in the future, then it's a um, a draft release, essentially. And if it's, not, if it's a, a date today or in the past, then it's an active release. That's actually fairly straightforward to implement if you're looking to contribute something. Um, and that's actually very, very important. It's listed on our, um, our list of uh, you know, items, oh, not this one, uh, for uh, maturing. Sorry, not this one either. It's listed on our list of items for maturing the category here. So, there are small things that are very, very important here and across all of these things. Um, I'd also welcome, you know, you can reach out to me uh, through Ray or you can find me on Twitter. My handle is J4LENN. -N. That's J4LENN. -N. Um, and uh, it's easy. Uh, get in touch. We can talk about what your skills are, what you're interested in working on. We can find something interesting. I think that I've covered most everything. Uh, Ray, did I not touch on anything that you think? No, was no, I, I think you did a wonderful job. I mean, the only other thing that I wanted to point out, if people are interested, like below the contributing section, if you scroll down, I think you have like plans for upcoming releases that people yeah. are interested. Um, yeah, and then like even like Q3 and Q4, I mean, you have things sort of outlined, like linked to issues. Uh, and I think a lot of these are accepting merge requests as well, right? People, yeah, almost all of them should be. Yeah. And, and, and even things that are coming up, like we're starting the development on this uh, in a few days, but um, mm -hmm. you're welcome to contribute with us. You're welcome to collaborate. Uh, it would be great. 12.2, mm -hmm. we haven't even started yet. So um, all of these things are, are, are very welcome to be contributed. Right, right. Yeah, so I mean, so like sort of like our roadmap is sort of out in the public. So we welcome obviously people's feedback. And if you have any questions, I mean, feel free to ping either me or, or any of the product managers like, like Jason, uh, I'll be happy to answer your questions. And uh, I mean, thanks Jason for bringing up uh, contribute for prize. Uh, so right now the prize uh, is, is a Moleskine notebook. I mean, that, that's sort of, that's laid out in the handbook. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, if you work on any of these issues during the hackathon, I mean, you can basically double dip on prizes. I mean, get the prize for contribute for prize, and 
I mean, get the prize for the hackathon as well. So uh, another, in, like a small incentive, I guess. Um, just checking the chat to make sure that we don't have any other questions from the audience. Uh, uh, David, was there anything that the, you want to cover as well or? I was gonna have a list of questions and uh, Jason uh, consistently was answering every one of them on the presentation. Um, so <laughs> I do have one though. Um, for, uh, for new contributors, it's not always obvious. Um, if they start contributing, they might <clears throat> not even follow an issue. They might file an issue themselves and, um, and start working on it. Uh, so in that, in, that, in that regard for them, it's not as obvious as which stage uh, they're working on or how we, they should tack that, uh, that, uh, that merge request. Um, which guidelines would you have uh, if it, um, for first-time contributors if they're developing a, a, new, uh, a new feature or, or fixing something in a new merge request for them to uh, use that tag DevOps uh, release and who to ping? I think um, Ray, th this might be better for you to answer. I have some thoughts on it, of course. Like, I, th I think it's good, very good to connect uh, early with the team that's actually going to be doing the work. But it can be quite complicated to to find that right team and to go spelunking in our you know overall strategy to figure it out it is complicated. Ray, does your team help with that? Yeah, I mean, so we, I mean, I, I think in the previous session, David mentioned this, we have a bot that scans through all the community contributions that come in. And then, I mean, I subscribe to that label. So, I mean, I, I do my best to tr try to triage him. Uh, and, you know, you, Jason, you've been pinged by, by, uh, by me several times, uh, like in the last week or so. I, I try to ping the PMs and, and the engineering managers, whether it's back end or front end, uh, to, I mean, at least let the community members know that who the right people are uh, to to start the review and start the conversation. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'll, I definitely try to triage them. And if um, Jason tells me this belongs in a different category, then then we move on to a different product managers and different yeah. people. Like and that's that. to that's totally fine. It, it is yeah. complicated to navigate, but do right. endeavor to um, to reach out to someone, even if it's reaching out to me directly on Twitter or to Ray or, or whoever. Yeah. I'm not sure where this goes. More than happy to help. We love contributions, um, and uh, we yeah, we, we we would just love for you to contribute. We don't want you to get frustrated uh, and kind of get lost in the administration or bureaucracy of how how this all works. Yep. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Cool. I guess. Uh, uh, there's no other questions. We'll uh, just end the session here. So thank you, Jason, for, for your time and for uh, uh, this will all also be added to the playlist for uh, for the hackathon. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of people viewing the recording as well. Thanks, Great. Jason, and enjoy the holidays tomorrow. But, thanks, Ray, and thanks right. to all the contributors. Uh, right. Yep. Thank you. You're here. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.